guys ready to finish this 3,000 year old guitar as much as I am? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time. People have been patiently waiting and some people have been really impatiently waiting. That's right. So today, we have made a vow to get this thing finished. Well, not, next, it won't be finished today. It won't be finished today. Yeah, but we're going, <laughs> We are going to move this thing down the line quite significantly here in the next few weeks. So what we have to do on this guitar now is finally knock this bevel down and turn it into, I don't know, a bevel. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode. Uh, the Finally, the payoff from the last, I don't know, probably, uh, I think, four episodes we've been working on this arm bevel. Uh, and now today we're going to use a couple of real basic tools. We're going to knock this bad boy down, get a really nice 45-ish uh, degree bevel on it, and then we're going to be ready to finally put the veneer over it, and we can almost call this body finished. So with that, I'm going to fire up the vacuum clamp, and I'll show you guys how to do it. So we've got this thing in the vacuum clamp. Um, if you don't have a vacuum clamp, just very carefully find a way to uh, clamp your guitar to your workbench so that you can do this without the guitar moving around as much. But what we need to do at this point, I drew this up just a second ago, don't mind my ugly drawing, is what I have done is done a visual representation of what we have going on here. This right here is the um, basswood, basically the bevel. Uh, this is, I don't want to get any ink on the guitar. That's the bevel, this is the side. This is the top. Here is our pearl. And then this right here is this piece of maple that we have right here on the outside. And then this piece that we see right here is this piece of maple that we have here. What we want to do in this video is I'm going to knock all of this down and we're gonna connect the dots right there. But we want everything to perfectly intersect with our black, white, black purfling here and the very edge of our side right here. Um, so that is the trick to the whole thing. We also want to do all of that without making this thing rounded. We want to make sure that it's as flat as possible. So what I did for years was I used um, a really coarse rasp uh, and it did a really decent job. The issue with this that I found is that you just naturally have a tendency to kind of round it over more than make it a perfect 45 degree angle. Um, you could use this, you can use a, a razor file that I love, or just a standard file, which fun fact are often called bastard files, depending on how uh, coarse they are. So we're talking about like the congeniality of the file Listen, being a, making it a bastard file? I didn't file? make the etymology, it's just what it's called. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bastard file, <laughs> that bastard file. I'll say, yeah, so, so just so we're clear, we're not commenting on the lineage of the file yes, it, and it's, the it, legitimacy it, of the, uh, yeah. the relationship of the file's it's parents. It's difficult to prove its father is. Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, you are gonna do it by hand, that way and we're going to use uh, this technique even with my technique uh, is you're going to use some sort of straight edge once you start knocking it down and setting this on here so that we can visually see that we're getting a nice flat edge on it um, just basically just kind of a witness what I use nowadays though is my uh, trusty Festool Rotex sander with a 60 grit sandpaper on it uh, and and the other trick is I replace the head on this sander with the um, the firmest one that they make so it has basically no play to it. So we know that this is perfectly flat. Uh, well, I keep saying perfectly flat. I know that it's not like machined perfectly flat. It's flat enough. Uh, and uh, we can just turn this on the Rotex option so that it's gonna spin full 360 uh, instead of just jittering. And we're gonna hog this out that way. What I like about using this technique is it's a little bit, it's faster and it gives me more control. I was gonna say it's both faster and slower. I don't know how to describe that. It hogs that material really quickly, but it also kind of, by how much pressure I'm applying to it, I can control how much material I'm removing. And as I'm doing it, it's gonna give me time to really visually make sure that I'm not biting into that purfling. The reason I'm doing all of this explaining now is obviously as soon as I flip the switch on this, it's gonna be really loud. So uh, the way that we're gonna do this is I'm gonna start hogging out some material here and uh, I'll probably pause periodically to kind of give you guys what my thought process is. Um, I think the big important thing here to remember, the largest takeaway for me is that we have two, we have a, uh, two termination points um, once we glue our veneer onto here. Um, and those termination points are edge to edge are our purfling up here. The white, black, white purfling that we have is going to be where the very edge of our um, veneer goes. And then the other termination point is going to be where the side goes. Let me go grab one of my other 
bevels real quick. So we'll go to this one, which is almost an identical guitar, which is convenient. So let's look at this one that's finished. Um, just use this to point, and you can see, see our purfling? Hopefully the camera is getting it. Yeah. That veneer that's laid on there is gonna butt up against our black, white, black purfling in this case, and that is what gives us our clean, crisp line. So here we have our binding, our purfling. Now we're into the point where we no longer have binding, we have veneer. So we need that binding and purfling point to be the, the end point. And then down here, this is a little bit different because we have pearl on the sides, but it's the same thing. It's gonna be terminated at the point where the bevel stops. Uh, I, <laughs> I can't find a better way to explain it. Hopefully that, that gives you an idea of what our goal is here. But you can really, the way that you can screw the pooch is, Wait for it. The way that you can really screw this up is if you go too far, especially on the top side, into that purfling. Once you do that, there's pretty much no way to recover from it um, other than probably routing out some of your, uh, your purfling and reapplying it. So I wanted to just be very cautious here and let you guys know that you can mess this up pretty quickly. You've done all this work. You've put days of work into this thing, and at this point is where you can really screw it up. So just take your time. Really just, if this is the edge of where you wanna to go to, just very carefully get yourself to that point. Don't just try to take it to that line immediately. So that's my word of caution. So with that, I'm gonna fire this sander up and we're gonna begin just hogging things out. Then uh, you'll see how quickly this goes. I wanna say the first step that we're gonna do with the 60 grit sandpaper, whether I was using the sandpaper technique or using a rasp is I'm just purely at this point gonna to try to to connect the dots between the, our sacrificial maple here and our sacrificial maple there. Just gonna hog that down, get us to a starting point, essentially. That's what we're gonna do right now. So it can kinda, you don't have to be super careful here. Uh, just get rid of the basswood as much as you can.
Okay, so we've got that knocked down kind of what I would consider at the starting point here. We're not like, it looks pretty good, but we've now kind of just gotten to the point where we really need to start paying attention is kind of what I'm getting at. Can um, I say, were you using that, the sacrificial pieces of wood there? Were you using this as like, when is this? Cause I heard you clip those every now yep, and then. Yep, you're basically using them as like a bumper guide, okay. you know, for this initial step. This is like phase one of knocking this bevel into place. Um, it's just getting your sander or your, you know, if I'm using a rasp, it's the same thing. We're just coming in here and I would be very careful to just, just kind of touch the two sacrificial pieces of binding. Once those are connected, we know that we've got a good starting point. I should be able to put, yeah, um, put this on here and there's not it's not rounded over now i want to caution you guys at home who are possibly trying to do this with just kind of like your your hardware store da sander um that don't have replaceable heads on them is that you probably have a softer foam head on here than i have here and if you do that it's going to naturally want to put more of an arc inside of this instead of just a nice straight edge so there is something to be said about these festool sanders because like i said i'm able to put a, a firm um sanding uh face or head or whatever you want to call it on here, which makes sure that this is nice and flat. So just point, just wanted to point that out to you guys. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get in here and we're just going to be very, very careful. I'm going to kind of work from like here to here. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the transition areas just yet because those just take a little bit of more finesse. So I'm, I'm just going to keep knocking these things down. Once again, I'm going to, I'm going to be paying attention to this top part that we don't go into the purfling. I want to get just to the edge of my purfling. Like to, this is a white, black, white. So just to the outside white line of purfling. And then the same thing down here. Um, and we're just gonna very carefully uh, knock it down to it looks pretty dang good. Um, we, and with this, you're not gonna be able to tell, but what I'm actually doing is I'm regulating the amount of pressure I'm applying to it so that I can say, oh, and I'll take out more material here versus less material here. I'll release the pressure that I have on it. But yeah, you can see how it's already starting to look like something, right? It looks like a, Mm -hmm. uh, looks like a bevel. Yeah, it does. Is there any bevel puns? I got a bevel with you. I don't know. Don't let him get away with it, people. <laughs> 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 Jesus. Yeah. All right, here we go. Hey, what's your angle? Let's stop and show y'all what was going on here. I'm actually going to take a little pencil, I think, so we can put some lines in this for you. I'm going to, just to make this easier for everybody at home to see. Does that help at all? That little pencil line there shows where we're at. And then you can see where our purfling is. That's where we want to get to. So we're about a millimeter away before we're to where we want to. And the same thing is happening down here. You know, that's where we are before we intersect with the binding or with the body wood uh, I will say this one the one down here if you don't have um, pearl like I had on the other guitar or if you don't have purfling down here if it's just like this one where it's just wooden binding going into the wooden sides this one's not nearly as critical like if you go into the sides a little bit it doesn't matter it, it, it visually won't look any different so it's not a big deal though yeah. this one up here is just so important um, so you can see that's where I got this too I would call this phase two 
Phase one was just getting it roughed in. Phase two is getting it pretty dang close. And so what I'm gonna do is and go ahead and get it kind of phase two here and here, get it pretty close. Then with like my full attention, we're gonna take it to its final uh, spec, which is gonna be that, you know, right up against the perf thing and right against the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my sander, come this way a little bit. I'm still not gonna get into this, um, the waist area of the guitar. Uh, I'll show you, this. you gotta use a little bit different tooling to do that, um, but you'll see how we're, we're just, just taking our time. We're gonna get it, we're gonna get it there uh, and, and just be very careful. If you do hit the bell, will you get unrested? That's see, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Arm rested, guy. <God. laughs> it's like it's a cop show up, kid. Oh, I see what you're doing. Oh, okay. I need to get this sanded down and you get this binding so that it's perfectly flush. It's not still a little proud. So I'm gonna sand this down real quick just to get it flush with the sides. <laughs> Easy. Oh yeah. I love these razor files. Ah, oh, they're so joyous to use. Where's this coming from? It's Stimex. Okay. Listen, it's not that we're like Stimex fanboys. It's just like they make good stuff. So yeah, deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a common situation that we have down here. Is that we we have all this like there's there's not to me enough of a foundation there for us when we glue the veneer onto it to stick to we have all this so what we can do is i know that this can seem a little bit like janky for lack of better words but i'm going to take some scrap binding and we're going to cut it to fit inside there and super glue it in place and then we're just going to knock it down uh it just because we need something as like a backer board for our veneer to stick to um it's that's just how you do this you just got to build it up so that the veneer has something to stick to i know that it's just like random scrap pieces of wood glued in there but it's, it's truly what you need to do uh, i've never found a better way to do it so we're going to do that i'm going to dig through my drawer here find some scraps we'll just jam it in there i think that a lot of you at home will <clears throat> probably run into the same situation but you can see our our the rest of our backer scrap wood is really filling in nicely. It's it's really nice, uh, it's sitting perfect. We have one spot where I did exactly, yeah, right here. This is exactly, see that I sanded it right to the edge of our purfling. Mm -hmm. And it, that's, that's you don't wanna go any further than that. Your backer material um, doesn't need to be the same material as your bevel. I, if you have some that's the same material, let's go ahead and use it. Um, and the reason I say that is if you do happen to have some of your, your your substrate material uh, visible when you go to glue your veneer on. It's, if it's made out of the same material, then it won't be as visible. Okay, so see what we've done here is I've just it just kind of fits in there nicely, and we're just gonna slap it in place with some super glue and move on with our day. Uh, it's not this is not rocket surgery. You know. For $15,000, I'd expect a little bit better craftsmanship than that. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Always one. You know what? You were never going to buy one anyway. Yeah. I actually make the back and sides out of most of my guitars out of Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> it's that rare tone wood. Yeah. <laughs> East African Chester wood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Just get this in place and then we're gonna get back in there with our sander and get this nice and smoothed out. Liberal on the uh, accelerator application. Always, <laughs> always. I'm gonna go ahead and just knock down 
that there. Um, so this reminds me as I do this, don't follow your natural tendency to just take a chisel uh, when you have all this still sticking out and just hogging this down with your chisel. And the reason I caution you against that is A, all it takes is one slip and you've gone into the top of your guitar or the side of your guitar, but more likely to happen, especially if you're using basswood for your, uh, for your bevel, is that the, because we're coming around at a radius like this, is the grain direction changes so much that you're really highly likely to get a big tear out. Uh, and then you're gonna end up with a low spot in your bevel. So there's a, re there's a reason why after probably doing 40 bevels, that I'm, I have settled on sandpaper because the sandpaper, while slower, uh, is safer. It's not going to have any sort of issues with tear out. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to put. Uh, we're just going to start hogging that back out again. You'll see how it's all nice and smooth again. Oh my god, I, had, I got super glue out of my shoe and my foot was stuck to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch over to a 220 and um, I'm just going to hit the top here and I'm just doing that so that we can get a really nice crisp line between the bevel and the top of the guitar real quick. Okay, so we're gonna need to do the same thing to over here. Um, we just kind of ran out of like backer material. So I'm just gonna jam some, some more maple inside there so that we have a spot for that to go on to. No, NBD, NBD. This is tough because like, because we're videoing, uh, it's a little bit of like extra pressure where I'm like, okay, I can do this kind of quick because Matt's recording. Um, I know he doesn't care, but uh, I'm going to try to forget about that because this really does take one of the highest levels of concentration to not screw up. So I'm just going to really try to focus on getting it right. Yeah. Okay, see how that works really nicely? Uh, all I 
you do is you just kind of cut like a arbitrary angle into it that you feel like is right and then you can just take this and go first first try you see that ah wow. oh, i done broke that oh my. <laughs> so will not do that nothing to see here nothing to see here not a little number 10 super glue won't fix yeah crikey <laughs> <laughs> It'll buff out. It's fine. It's fine. Seriously, the number, number 10 super glue will fix it. Yeah. All that's held in with super glue in the first place. Look, even an experienced builder like myself, I don't know whether that'll make the video, but. I'm inclined to keep it. I'm inclined to keep it too. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to see here, people. Uh, lessons have been learned already. Uh, don't apply too much pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Also wear a respirator. <laughs> <laughs> talk about how we're just gonna take a day and like sharpen all the tools you know yeah might be one of those coming up soon yeah it's not not lessons in proper tool handling well you know it never is yeah <laughs> unfortunately we're too busy having to make guitars and videos for people and <laughs> yeah okay. you should sharpen your tools but you should give us another eight hours of the day <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah Can I borrow a few eight hours or so? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. Um, that was a journey. Uh, so now I'm gonna knock that down with my sander and we'll continue on with our day. Um, this is kind of, a, a lot of times, this is exactly what you're seeing. It's kind of just problem solving, figuring out what you need to do to make this to make this right, to get this kind of nice and flush. So, but that's what we're doing. Yeah. Warts and all, people. Fine sandpaper on here, so. <laughs> I'm like, why is this going so slow? Oh, yeah. Um, my, remember that uh, this is like at a 45, and then as we get closer to the sides, it's kind of straightening out. So be aware of that. This is not just like a steady angle the whole time. Uh, so there's a little bit of a challenge getting all that dialed in. I should wear a respirator. Okay, it feels really good to me. All right, I'm gonna switch over. We've got, let's back up. We've pretty much got from here to here uh, done. It just is down to that little tiny little minuscule of a bit. So what I'm gonna do is switch from the 60 grit to a 180 and I'm just gonna put my optivizers on and we're very carefully gonna take it down to hopefully it's finished level. Uh, and uh, we'll see what, see, what to, see what she gives me. Uh, I did take a, a little whiff of my allergy medicine. So we'll be sniffling a little less too. <laughs> we do it because we care. We do it because we care. That's right. Matt's like, you want to go take some of your allergy medicine? 
It's my it's my way it's my nice way of being like, hey, bro, like nice love language. Quit, quit sniffling, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so like, what'd you say? I saw like Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting down to it. So I'm just gonna really take my time. Uh, I'm paying most of my attention to the top part here, uh, and uh, we're just gonna take it to the purfling. Say, take it to one more time. One more time, like Don Henley. Not right, Don Henley. Is this one you? It's not Henley. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good. So a big chunk of like when Matt first started working here and like when I had my apprentice last year or two years ago now, geez, uh, it was like when you're sanding is like situational awareness and this applies huge here. Like if you're paying attention here, also peripherally be aware of what's happening down here. So you need to be like not thinking about any one, you need to be thinking about like holistically what is the sander doing. And mind you, I'm talking about a sander here. If you're doing this with files, the same thing applies. Just because you're paying attention to one spot, don't forget that this stuff down here matters as well. So just think about that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out specifically for people who are doing this with a sander is that if you're trying to get this edge up here to intersect, don't just move your sander up at an angle like this. Um, make sure that you're still getting full purchase, full contact from edge to edge on here because if you were to start kind of angling your sander more this way just to get that down you're going to end up rounding over your bevel which is you might think is not a big deal but you, in the next step when we actually go to glue the veneer on you'll see that it becomes well you won't see here because i'm not doing it but if you do that it would create issues when you go to glue your veneer on um, so yeah you notice that i've used the finer grit sandpaper and i've actually slowed my sander down and i've got my optimizers and it's looking really good but we're just going to gonna keep going I just wanted to mention those those things just be uh, paying attention to every part of your tool yeah <laughs> you heard it yeah <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, I've gotten basically from here to here. Let's, let's show you. I mean, I think you can tell with my pencil. Let's see, we're like right on it. I know that it's probably very difficult to see. I don't want to put too much pencil on it to mess it up. Uh, but we've got it right on the edge. So what I'm going to do is start shifting my focus a little bit further down here to get this line perfect. Um, like I said, this one here, let's show. I went a little far on this one spot. Let's see. Oh, right there. Can you see that I went into the mm -hmm. side? Totally fine in this particular situation uh, because I don't have any pearl or anything like that down there. So we are just, you're fine to do that down there. You, you would be in a world of hurt if you did that up here, but down here, it's totally fine. So um, we're gonna take that and just keep working our way over here. Um, I know Matt and I were talking, we had a tendency to kind of like skip over a lot of this, but a lot of people do comment and say like, hey, we want to see Chris do it because that's how, you know, that's how we figure it out too. So we're, we're, we're leaving a little bit more of the meat and, meat and taters in this video, I think, mm -hmm. for folks at home. So hopefully hopefully this is making sense to you guys, but uh, it's hard to see because I'm dealing with things on such a small scale here, but yeah. it's sure looking good. Yeah. Oh, I keep forgetting. The other thing you're gonna notice that I'm doing as I'm not sitting in any I'm not sitting in one spot. I'm constantly keeping fluid motion with my body and the sander um, because we don't want any flat spots. So just think about that too. You don't want to have like it looking like a stop sign when you're finished. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just like I've said so many times throughout this whole series, is trust your hands more than your eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, and just if it feels like it's lumpy, you're not doing it right. This feels super smooth because remember once we glue our veneer on and we sand it and we go to do it's it's when you put that clear coat on the guitar that lacquer coat that if it is lumpy the gloss is going to show that uh so we're, we're we're thinking about that far ahead already uh, but it feels good She's looking good. Um, that looks good to here. Everything's good from here to here, like pretty much ready to go for the veneer. I still have a lot of work to do in this area, so I'm gonna switch to that part. I do wanna mention one, one little thing, because I know that people are gonna mess up, and I wanna show you, you have a little bit of an opportunity to recover. If, if you do sand into your purfling up here, say you go into it, within a limited amount of, uh, like if you don't go into it too far, you can recover a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that you're gonna recover from that is you're gonna take some fine grit sandpaper and you're gonna sand the surface here. Because what you can do is you can actually sand that a little bit down and reveal a little bit more of that purfling again. Um, you ah. see what I'm saying? It's hard for me to kind of to show you what I mean by no, that. that. Makes sense. But, um, yeah. 
Um, but remember, by doing that, you're also removing a little bit of the wood around the edge of your guitar, so you 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 only have a limited amount that you can recover from. Like, so if you've really got dug into it, uh, you you probably need to come up with a different solution than that. <laughs> I don't know what that solution is. Mm -hmm. So I know that I keep harping on this because I think the reason that it is that I keep harping on is because you can really screw up here. Um, so just take your time. If this takes you three days to get right, but you've taken it very, very slowly, then it's worth it. Don't just get in here and mindlessly hog into it. If you're in a bad mood, don't do it. If you're not in the right mental state, don't do it. Do it when you're when you're ready to do it, where you can focus your energy on this step um, because there's, it's kind of high stakes at this point. Um, I would probably say out of all of the parts of the guitar build up until the, at this point, this is kind of the, the part where you really need to be wholly focused uh, on, on this part of the build. Uh, but it looks really, really good up to this point. So what we're going to do is the waist area of the guitar. Um, let me get behind you real quick, Matt. Sorry. We're, I'm going to use my pinwheel sander to, to get inside this waist area. It's a little bit risky. Uh, another way of doing it is you, you use an old, uh, I use a glass cups or, um, you know, that aerosol cans and wrap some sandpaper around it. We're going to use a little bit of both for this part. But mine is the pneumatic style of um, pinwheel sander, so you can see it's pretty low air pressure in there right now. A little too squishy. We want to make sure that it's really nice and rigid, so I'm going to put a little bit of air inside of here real fast. Um, same deal is going to apply here with the sander though. I'm going to very, very carefully uh, be focused on getting this to uh, the, the purfling. Um, same deal. It's Nothing's different. It just uh, The nice thing I like about this is that I can kind of get in there and, and run it real slow if I want. Uh, if you don't have one of these, uh, we'll try to find a link. Uh, I think I got this at Grizzly. Uh, these things, I know we talked about them in the episode where we leveled uh, the sides, but buy one of these. Don't, don't ever regret it. I'm actually... people <laughs> Jesus you're gonna get so many comments and I don't feel I don't even feel a little bit sorry for that's you that's alright that's okay <laughs> All right, it's a little janky, uh, but we're gonna now connect the dots. What I've been able to do on that part was just get that to the very edge of here. So now I'm gonna very carefully uh, kind of make it all uh, transition nicely from the binding into the veneer and back into the binding again. So because we can't, we can't obviously get in here with this because it's gonna create a flat spot right there, but we can get it up to about there and then we'll do the rest of it with uh, just an aerosol can and some sandpaper. I feel like I'm not, the binding isn't isn't true to the sides here, it's a little proud, so I'm just going to take this and just come in a little bit and get it nice and flat.
Aoki Dirky, uh, I'm actually gonna flip this real quick so I can get better visual access to it. I guess I should close the valve. Yeah, this allows me to be able to get this a little better. It's part of it's kind of like the shadow and everything to be able to see it all really nicely. So it gets a little weird here because, like I said, we're for, we're about a forty five degree angle, and then it starts to kind of transition into almost, you know, uh, flat here. So it just gets a little it gets a little complicated. Um, so just pay attention to it and try to make sure that you're getting that transition as uh, smooth as possible. I have like a little ridge here that I'm going to sand out. I can't see it, but my fingers can feel it. So once again, paying attention, trust your hands. Yeah, queen. Oh yeah, that's good. For those of you that have watched the uh, the Stumac video series that me and Matt were in, we talked so much about prep work. This is very similar to that. Like this is taking your time here, uh, so that when we go to glue this veneer on, that we know that it's going to be right the first time. Um, so just take your time, man. Take your time. I can't say it enough. Get this right. Let me get some sandpaper. Uh, 120 grit here and I'm all I'm doing at this point now is I'm trying to get this transition from the the waist into the um, into the bevel smoothed out Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna pop this out of here real quick. And uh, I think that that will do us. So we have this now ready to go for the veneer. It's, uh, that's, it's, uh, your mileage is definitely gonna vary on this one. Take your time, get it right. Uh, and then the next episode, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we go about getting our veneer prepped and then uh, glued on and the last step of just kind of trimming it all down and we're finally gonna have our bevel in place and uh, we're on the, the very one more step and it's finished. So I hope you guys learned a little something in this episode. Don't be, uh, don't be too scared. I know that I kind of kept talking about the high stakes of this step, but it's, you can do it. It's not Fear that hard. Fear monger, I yeah. you know her. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> But no, it came out super good. Uh, I feel really great about it. And the next step is the payoff. So I hope you guys uh, will see you in the next episode. Thanks, guys.